We have an issue with overspending. In ChatGPT, 82% of the questions are finance questions. I think the question is, what is money? Start talking about money with people, with friends, with everyone around you riding horses. <laughs> Why do you think millennials especially are uh, struggling with finances right now? Well, thank you. That's a great question. Um, so I would say this year I started asking myself the question on um, looking very closely to my friends' money habits. Um, as I've been involved in the Bitcoin industry for the last three years, I became very aware of my financial management, financial planning. And because if I wanted to invest in Bitcoin, I needed to understand how much do I have available to invest this month um, and why, why am I investing this month more than the next one, or etc. So I started looking, talking more about money around me, honestly. And with friends, I identify there like a lot of pain points in conversations with my friends. They're all millennials in their 20s living in Miami. They're all graduated from school. They all, all have good careers, which earn more than a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, and they all struggle with finance and they're always struggling. I'm like, but why are you doing like I I understand that life can be expensive, but I think it's it's about your money habits and it's about your mindset and how if you can you stick to budgets or not like or do you have a plan like start asking myself so many questions and I start doing this research I realized that even cons including myself um, we have an issue with overspending. Overspending comes to is an it's a behavior that comes to us by in many ways, um, by socio like economic factors or social factors. Like it's so easy and convenient to buy things online today. It's so easy to even make money today. Like as a freelance, so you make money, you think you can spend more. Uh, it's so easy to go to these platforms when you can go invest uh, in in Bitcoin, in stocks, like one day you go crazy and then the next day you feel guilty. Why, like, why did I do this? And maybe I lose money and um, you think that the investments are bad. It's not the investments, maybe were your behavior. So um, all these pain points comes to how can we be better at sticking to budgets and really understanding our lifestyle and financial um uh, state today but also our goals what are they so myself i started uh looking this problem in two ways so i go and uh, sign up in personal finance management apps like quick quickbooks copilot spreadsheets like i normally use spreadsheets on sell itself and I tried to put all my bank accounts in one place. Cool, I could do that in these tools. But then after that, these tools give me the data and that's it. It's just numbers. And I'm like, mm. but also they look so overwhelmed. It's so like too much. I'm like, wait a second. And when I try to go by categories, I see that mm, this category like says, uh, I, buy, I bought something in Target, which actually was a medicine, is under groceries. No, that's not under groceries. That's under medicine or health. Um, so I had to go through these tools and manually change this, the categories, the transaction categorization, and do this over and over. I got tired of it. I was like, I'm not being effective. I keep spending money. I asked my friends for more recommendations, other tools. They tell me Rocket Money, they tell me Mint, they tell me others, I try them all. And they still have all this problem. Other problems that I faced with the tools was like, one, they don't help me really to stick to my budgets. And even though I create budgets with them, they don't really help me. And also there's no guidance. Like there's no someone that helps me go and analyze this financial data that I'm having here, so, right? So I look for a financial advisor. <laughs> and then a financial advisor took seven weeks to complete a financial analysis of the last 
three months of my expenses from all of my bank accounts. Why? Because he did it with spreadsheets. So he did it all manually and we have to go over together many times. And it really stressed me out. I asked my friends if they've done that before. They all say they have bounds the process because they get anxious to see the data. Um, because I guess people are scared about seeing their money habits, which is normal. I think we actually 83% of Americans in the United States graduated from school without financial education. They all probably, uh, there's um, 73% of uh, have uh, student loan debt. So people in their 20s, my friends, they all have student uh, student loan debt. So they already have debt. They all probably got a car like me. You also have a car debt. And you are struggling because you really don't know what to do next after you see all this data from the tools, basically, that it is today. So I realized this issue. And uh, basically, I come up with a solution. I started my own journey as an entrepreneur again uh, six weeks ago, um, starting my next week. It's my seventh, but I'm counting every every week. And I'm creating a software AI-based platform um, to help millennials, mainly people like me, uh, recently graduated in their 20s with a bachelor degree or uh, maybe a, another level degree, student loan debts. Um, they have they have understanding of importance of investment, investing your money. They have the importance that you, they recognize, they're aware that they're overspending because they don't have the best habits um, to stop overspending, basically. So this tool is going to help people um, analyze their fi personal finance. Um, th so this is how it works. One, it connects all your bank accounts in one place. That already it says we're using Plate for this. Two, you're going to chat with the name of the platform is Felipa. Uh, Felipa is a girl. It's actually the girl that is suffering this problem. So you chat with her. She's going to read your financial data, but she's going to ask you questions about your lifestyle goals and your financial goals, such as get rid of debt or invest more in Bitcoin, right? And then and then maybe uh, I want to buy a horse. That's a lifestyle goal. <laughs> and so, okay, she gathered all this data and then she created five what-if scenarios plans for you, budget plans. So based on what you already spend your money on, she's going to tell you, listen, you have these five different plans. Pick one that is going to help you reach your goals. The plans, uh, um, they uh, change based on time. So if you want to reach your goals faster, you pick the, let's say I want to get rid of my student loan debt in one year. I pick that one. It opens and the next step is she's telling you what is your budget on each of the categories that you already spend your money on um, per month for one year. And she also tells you, hey, if you accomplish that, you're going to pay off your student loan debt with this amount of money and you're going to be have invested in Bitcoin this amount of money. So you already know the outcome of your behaviors. And, and, and then what is going to happen, she's going to give you virtual cards to stick to your budget by categories. So in restaurants, you only have $300. In fitness, you only have $200 for one year. So you're not changing what you spend your money on, you're changing how much you're spending on the mon your money. Um, and then it's also automatically set up so you invest automatically, pay off debt automatically, and uh, invest on your, uh, um, pay your fixed cost automatically as well. And then the last part is Felipa chat with you every morning, every night. She reminds you of your goals in the morning and she even gives you examples like, hey, what about skipping $8 in a Starbucks today? Just that, just $8. 
skip that and it's going to help you get closer to your goals. Um, and then she at the end of the day, she reminds you and then you can chat with her and just get personalized insights of your financial data. What is the outcome of all of this? The outcome is that you're going to be able to save more money at the end of the day and invest more money at the end of the day. My goal is to help people at my age to be more conscious about their money, to improve their money habits, to get rid of debt if they want. It's a responsibility that probably they got on when they were young without having the maturity to understand that this will cause them like health issues. And so they can invest more for their future, invest more in Bitcoin. Like I, I, when I, my, my goal would be guys, you, you need to now be smart with your money, go invest more in Bitcoin. If, if, um, and that's the way I'm going to be able to help millennials, um, to learn about Bitcoin as well. So, um, I took this journey and I've been, yeah. So it's, uh, it's incredible how just by being part of the ecosystem and Bitcoin, I learned, uh, I've been learning a lot of mo money in different ways. And right now I'm learning that money habits is where everything starts and your mindset about money. So I'm literally telling people, Money is a good thing to talk about. The more transparent that you are and vulnerable, the more you're able to fix your problems. And they're all fixable. They're just numbers. But the tools, they're, they're not there yet to closely help millennials as, as, as I'm designing this tool for myself. So if it was going to work for me, it's going to help work for a lot of others. Um, so yeah, and right now we're basically raising money and working with software development teams to build the first MVP of the product. Mint is a personal finance platform that shut down two weeks ago and they lose 4 million users uh, like in two weeks. And right now those users are also like out there uh, with no tools, it's crazy. And something interesting I found is in ChatGPT, um, eighty-two percent of the questions of the conversations in GPT are finance finance questions. Honestly, wow! <laughs> yes, so so cool, right? And I was like, okay, I guess people are trying to get help, and you know, um, it's yeah, definitely it's like. Yeah, it's fascinating for me that uh, we need those tools. I think uh, I'm, I'm thinking a lot, and this podcast is a lot around the problem. Like, why is that? Like, we, we, you are 100% right. There are so many people in debt. There are so many people with spending problems. You see people that have a good income, then you see what they are actually having on a bank account, and you're like, oh, <laughs> where, where did the money go, right? Uh, and this, this problem of having bad money habits. Um, I'm often thinking that it's rooted to the fiat system where the high time preference uh, is just not there yet. Uh, I'm also wondering, will that change on a Bitcoin standard? If we have a hard money standard, will that change? I actually don't know. Like I think, I hope that it changes automatically, that we don't even need those tools. Those tools are great. And I see a lot of uh, friends uh, and that are not in Bitcoin and struggling with finance. They have those apps. So I, this apps that you named, they are ringing a bell in my head because not because I ever used them, uh, but because I have friends that are struggling with finances and they are using them and they are saying like they are actually helping me. Uh, and I don't know what's the root cause of it. I generally think the fiat system in itself uh, highest the time preference and this is the root cause of that and with Philippa that's a, a great way to mitigate that bad fiat monetary policy with an AI assistant that helps you basically do that uh, as I understood it from your explain it, explanation I also hear it today the first time um, but that's that's really really cool so the, the question for me for you would be now do you think uh, on a full Bitcoin standard where we don't have fiat money where there's no a way to print money for governments. I mean, this would be way out. <laughs> like this is like hundred years. Uh, uh, a few. W will we still need those tools? Will we? St will, do do people have those financial 
bad habit problems still on a sound money standard or is it just something or just something of the fiat problem is it something that's rooted in just spend uh, just uh, increasing the money supply from the federal reserve so it i think um it's all about it's high time for preference is mindset right and it's education and being informed about the cost of your decisions mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter that, that what you spend like it doesn't matter what you spend on or how much but i think if you're consciously aware of why are you doing this more and be more intentional with your money then your money becomes back to you more in abundance as well. And it comes back to you. You, It's like you feel more satisfied and instead of being afraid of spending your money on places or on things that tomorrow you're going to feel guilt. Because guilt, what causes is people... Uh, like bad, like overeating, like uh, eating bad even eating behaviors. It causes more stress. It causes more spending. It's co it causes uh, reactions. And at the end of the day, Bitcoin is telling you, it's telling us that we want to be free, right? We we want the freedom, but not just the freedom financially. It's the freedom of being happy. It's like we want to be in a place that. We are kind with each other, respect each other. We're happy with each other. And also you're happy when all your areas in your life are more aligned and they're moving into the right direction. So if you know that you, if you make a con conscious decision about, it's like food, think about it. So you eat, you don't eat certain meats or center type of meat because you know the consequences and you really care about it and you're intentional about the food that you are going to eat so with money if you say i'm intentionally like putting my this money in this thing because right now my priority in life is to achieve these financial goals or is to achieve this lifestyle then everyone is going to be able to achieve their lifestyle at their pace they can there's no instant gratification is you do, you're doing what you can. You're sticking to your promises and you're committing to yourself. So I think it's habits, it's mindset and it's gratification that is not instant, but it's the real one. Um, it's going to connect you with yourself more. And is so it's, it's, I call it like, to me, this era is money's energy. Hmm. So to me, uh, money's energy and wherever you put your, mon your money on, that's where it goes. That's what you receive and that's where it goes. And if you receive it and then think that whatever you did was bad, you're going to feel bad. So this is very philosophical, but answering your question, I believe that it's going to come down to the point that probably we realize that spending is not what we really want in life. Spending money. Maybe we see that we can live very simple and we can have a very basic life um, instead of being wanting a, like super luxury. Or maybe we can achieve the luxury when we want it. And we, But it's not like... We, we need it. It's not we need it. It's like we want it and we can because we already work on it. And we and if we have it, it's because we like high value uh, quality material stuff. But you work on it. Um, and yeah, so that's how I see it. It's like a world where there's more simplicity and more humbleness. It doesn't matter the numbers on your bank account. Mm -hmm. because 
it's what matters is your habits and your mindset. Um, and, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I think your story is also really uh, inspiring because uh, you started in Venezuela. Now you're in Miami building your own company. Uh, let's, let's, maybe let's get some context in there for the, the viewers that don't know you. Um, how did you start out in, in, in Venezuela? Why did you end up in Miami? How did you even come to Bitcoin? How did you come to, to this uh, finance world? And yeah, t take us a little bit uh, through your story. Okay. Um, I was born in Venezuela and raised until high school. I was educated there until uh, I moved to Miami to start my bachelor's degree in university. But in that journey, um, my parents, like five years before, they no, like seven years before I came here, they put me to study in English and I had a second school. And I was like, why do I need to go to a second school? And none of my friends are doing this after the first school and my parents were always like it's very important to know to learn English because English is gonna open a lot of doors for you and I was like I right, fine I couldn't understand that at that point um, both my parents were entrepreneurs they worked together for 25 years uh, they do import and export type of uh, companies in Venezuela um, and very successful in a way that we could travel to the United States every year. But uh, the last four years of me in Venezuela, I'm talking uh, 2014 to 2017, um, they were very, uh, they literally changed their mindset like this from white. Like, I, I remember, like, they were, like, saving more stop spending uh we're probably not gonna travel that much for now because my dad says my goal in four years is to get get you out of the country you're not gonna be here anymore and i'm like okay i understand that we were living under under a very hard economical and political situation we would look at the news every day i wouldn't have electricity at least uh every other day in the week I come from school, from my second school at night to do all the homework that I need to do. And there's no electricity and literally I have to turn on a candle in my uh, desk and work like that. And next day I have an exam and that's how I would do things in a super rich country. And it's like, wow, it, it, it was incredible how we we just have to be resilient and patient with whatever we're living. There was no other way. We couldn't solve that. It's not under our own control. And and then next day, for example, pain points. Next day, uh, probably there's no gas. And my dad cannot take us to school because he's like, he has very few guys. And it's like, either I use this to take you guys to school to go for work. And today I have like five clients visiting the office. I cannot skip that. I need to find a way to get you to school. There's no Ubers, there's no these taxis uh, type of system, and it's very dangerous also. Um, so of course, you know, you figure it out, like calling friends, moms, hey, hey, are you, can you pick up my girls? Like challenges that we're like, why? Like these are challenges that just this country leaves, really. No one else is facing this. Okay, and then all this time passed and, you know, I was, the time that I was getting graduating was approaching. Um, I remember my last time in Venezuela was a trip that I did with my friends uh, that I, we all grad, grad, graduated and we took with ourselves like packs of these, of uh, Bolivares, like packs of bills. And we were like, we're rich with pack of bills and it's nothing. Like in one week, one of us got out of cash because just in food and paying transportation. And we were like uh, having fun at the beach. We did a trip to the beach out of cash. And we called our parents like, oh my gosh, we got a pack of cash and we are giving a pack of cash every time we pay for one food. And it's we were not dollarized at that moment. 
Of course, that made me realize myself that I really want to leave the country. So when my when the tide came, I was super happy. I came to the United States, to Miami. I graduated from business analytics, entrepreneurship. I completed five different programs for entrepreneurship, uh, which helped me build uh, companies from idea to MVP, to MVP, to product launch, then hypotheses, testing, and then if you got a good good company just go and growth and scale so i did that five times this is my sixth time uh this i'm doing right now i think it's my best one um i ever felt before and um i'm I'm not gonna stop in terms of i really came to this country to be an entrepreneur and even though i work for companies i always tell them listen i'm entrepreneurial at heart and if you want to, I, I want to be add value to in, in the bigger projects, the one that causes the biggest impacts. Like I always want to have huge impacts. So that's how I decided to work in the Bitcoin industry. Uh, I met the CEO of IBETS in Miami and he saw me working on a co-working space for my previous company on digital marketing agency. And he's like, whoa, you plan all this event? And like, yes. And um, this is my own company. He's like, we we want someone like you and the team to, you know, launch this product in Miami. And it was a payment processor for Bitcoin payments. And I was like, oh my gosh, this sounds like the most innovative thing I ever heard about it with Bitcoin. I was so, I came like from Venezuela, I came here and I only like would, hear about Bitcoin as an investment at home. My mom would invest in Bitcoin a lot, and that's how I learned about Bitcoin um, as an investment. Never heard of the Bitcoin payment processor already existed. So it was very innovative. Um, I was always uh, very grateful about my job with IBET um, because they helped me see the potential for Bitcoin technology and um, problems that can solve for different industries. So basically I came in and started solving problems for the merchants on their transactions uh, to get lower transaction fees, to stop getting chargebacks, to um, um, get faster payments uh, under their wallet if they want to add Bitcoin to their treasury. So all of these problems, I was like helping them solve and I love Bitcoin about because of that. Uh, and then I continue my evolution in the Bitcoin industry by uh, exploring different sectors of the economy. So I went to the food supply chain and I talked to a lot of farmers and onboard a lot of farmers and educate them about Bitcoin. Um, I will help them set up their e-commerce store to sell beef on Bitcoin um, and I lived in Texas on a ranch as well to learn more about their business model and what other ways uh, Bitcoin could help them. And mm. I came back to Miami. And then after that, I changed from Bitcoin payments to Bitcoin earnings. So I started uh, working with a company that was building tools to help people earning Bitcoin from South America. Earning for what you said? Okay, earning their digital products, basically. How to today's economy is like everyone. It's like a digital creator, but there's people that wants to take this seriously and really make revenue, like podcasters, like you, um, or maybe artists, digital artists, and probably you want to get paid from someone from you know another country. Uh, how can you do that in a platform that allows you to communicate and um, receive payments? So I used to work with a Sphinx chat. Uh, which allowed me the opportunity to um, understand this market and work with cre creators from the, the different parts of the world. Me onboarding them to Lightning Network, onboarding them to Bitcoin. It was super fascinating. And um, I, I learned that 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 they these people actually are very conscious about um, their 
suffering monetization issues because the current platforms that it says to monetize your efforts and earn residual income are not super um Okay, one of them, like a few of them, like YouTube, for example, or Patreon, they charge like 30% of their income. So it's very hard for them to monetize and grow, grow with this. Or some of them pay them like after five days um, when the payment is processed. Like in terms of payments and monetization, this is where Bitcoin has opportunity. Um, and it's like, whoa, it's crazy. But now, now, um, Okay, where am I? Okay, yes. Now this is my journey. I'm still working in Bitcoin. I'm just expanding to cross-border payments and for to help um, send payments from United States to Mexico or to uh, Honduras, Guatemala, um, Argentina. So cross-border payments, not necessarily with Bitcoin. We're starting with uh, global remittances. Um and the use of uh, probably a stable coins, um, but of course Bitcoin is is is, is like the next step. Um, and when I say I'm starting this, is because I'm starting to add value to tools that already exist, that already have traction, to growth even faster or reach more more or you know growth their company metrics either in partnerships uh revenue user engagement but also my best is community engagement and onboarding process in terms of product so creating that in fintech is necessarily more when you're exchanging money from one country to the other you want to have people to feel a sense of community with your platform. So, yeah, um, um, I'm loving this journey of uh, working in fintech and, of course, um, maximizing my Bitcoin investments as um, as the right tool, as the right path for, uh, right now, millennials, for creators, for merchants. So all these personas, they can come to me and I'm going to be open to understand their pain points and their problems as I already have investigated um, and got, I have deep analysis on the markets. Um, so, yeah, um, they, I always say you can always chat with me, reach out. I have a mom that is a fan of Bitcoin. And if I don't know something about Bitcoin, probably I come home and probably I learn something new. Um I've been learning more about Bitcoin mining, um, uh, but it's, it's a long process. It's been three years, you know, and I'm still learning, um, still learning all the technology, still learning all these questions. There's so many questions. It's an entire monetary system um, to understand. Um, so, yeah, I always say to friends, let's just talk about Bitcoin and see what new questions come up. Um, that we probably didn't talk about it. <laughs> yeah, and it's fascinating because I'm four years in the space and I'm doing a daily podcast and I have so many guests on and every guest is bringing something new to the table. And I yeah. did not have any podcast where I'm like, ah, I did not learn anything today. Like every time there's some new perspective on something, something that I can learn from. And it's, it's, it's an amazing journey and it humbles me every time I have a guest on because there's something new coming up. I also like the Blu-ray example because I often see Blu-ray like as, uh, not Blu-ray, uh, stable coins. The example I like because I see stable coins like as Blu-ray. Blu-ray was this great uh, invention from CDs to Blu-ray, uh, which makes stuff better. But then all of a sudden the internet came and this is kind of how I see it in stable coins. They have now use cases, uh, but in the long run, uh, Bitcoin will yeah, eliminate all those use cases because it's just like putting fiat on better digital rails. Uh, but Bitcoin is solving the underlying monetary problem as well. So I, I, I like stable coins in the medium term, but long term it, it will be only Bitcoin. So that's why I'm, I'm really focused on, on, on Bitcoin. But I, I see that there are right now uh, in the short term or medium term, maybe even uh, use cases for, for stable coins. Uh, I'm not right. interested. And, and that's still good news, right? Because that means still people are 
this is how people are trying to solve their problems right now. Like they are out of the fiat system and they're trying to, they're trying stable coins as like their next step. And some of us have already understand the big potential of Bitcoin, but maybe they're not there yet. And that's okay. The most important part is like the ones that are on the side of uh, already on Bitcoin, how can we better leverage and like bring productivity to these users um, in what ways with Bitcoin? How can we better educate? How can we better engage uh, and add value, test, etc.? cetera, um, and, and without creating fear or assumptions, um, but really like uh, work in hands with those tools, those companies, those use cases. Yeah, I, I think I, that's to me like more of the approach um, that I would consider. That's the one that I'm taking. It's like I'm coming from a place of understanding and how can I help um, with Bitcoin on these technologies to transition to a bigger a better solution so yeah amazing and you also said in the in in the before talk and i think i saw it on, on twitter also that your mom orange pilled you this is something i never heard before that a, <laughs> a mom orange pilled someone no, it's yeah. crazy i know i know and yeah so crazy you have to it's funny she literally texts to me like any time of the day, she probably sent me a video. She's like, you should check this out. She invests in Bitcoin. I invest in Bitcoin today. She does, she's always like keeping in, in track of things. Um, yeah, both my parents, they love that I work in the Bitcoin industry. Mm -hmm. uh, the, yeah, it's uh, my dad is very analytical and like she, he asked me a lot of questions. Um, about Bitcoin, which is good. He makes me think a lot. Uh, he's also learning, and um, and and yes, yeah, funny. Yeah, she is the one that orange pill me. She orange pill my sister. My she, my sister bought her first Bitcoin this year. Like I've been doing that from before, but she was like, mm, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Every time they they we're together or at home. We're always talking about Bitcoin. My mom and I, my sister, okay, fine, I'll go to invest. 21 Bitcoin is Bitcoin only from day one and they teach and preach self-custody. This is my go-to exchange when someone asks me, oh, where can I buy my Bitcoin from? This is the easiest entry for Bitcoiners. And if you want lower fees, plus at the same time support this podcast, use code ROBIN and click the link in the description. Uh, amazing. And um, I'm also asking myself the question a lot, how do we get uh, the people, the world to adopt Bitcoin. How do we get the whole world on a Bitcoin standard? And that's why I'm also really interested in the, the in orange billing stories because these are the stories where someone goes from, I am in the fiat system, I'm saving in dollars, but oh, there is an alternative, there's Bitcoin. And now I'm checking this out. I said myself, for three years straight that Bitcoin is a scam. And then uh, more and more friends challenged me uh, because I made a lot of money in the stock market. So I was uh, the, the stock guy uh, and people are like, hey, uh, how do you do that? What do you think of Bitcoin? And at one weekend, I wanted to prove a friend wrong. He was like, hey, what do you think of Bitcoin? I don't like, I like Bitcoin. What do you think of it? And I was like, yeah, it's a scam. And I just discovered that um, I ran out of arguments and on Friday I decided, okay, let's dive into Bitcoin. Uh, on Sunday, I was like, ah, maybe I'm wrong. Monday I bought Bitcoin, Tuesday I bought my first ledger. Uh, and one year later I was all in Bitcoin. Like there was only Bitcoin for me, uh, in, in one year later. So like this wow. orange pilling stories, uh, once, once you get Bitcoin, once you get sound money, uh, so much changes in your life. I mean, for me, it's, it's maybe not that transformative because I saw it so early. Like I was 2021, 20, uh, when I got Bitcoin. Uh, so it's different for people that are maybe like 30, maybe they're like 50, even maybe they are sick. Like I have, can you imagine? Like I have 
thirteen uh, percent of my viewers on YouTube are above sixty five years old. So I'm I'm really blessed and and, and thankful for them that uh, um, people that are on on this age level are choosing to watch some some twenty five year old that has no clue about the world and just trying to figure out what Bitcoin is uh, with uh, amazing guests. Um, watch me, uh, so I'm I'm really grateful for that, and uh, I'm I'm astonished how when older people then orange pilling their kids then we are getting now to the stage where the older people are saying hey let's 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 uh, get our kids on on on, on this on this uh, thing and um you have a lot of orange pilling stories i saw on twitter you have a lot of orange pilling stories you have orange pilling story also with your mom that you were orange pilled by her um so i would just give you the question and you can do whatever you want with that how do we get the world uh, to adopt Bitcoin? How we how do we succeed with that? My biggest insight that it all comes understanding what is the money? What is money? Ask everyone, what is money for you? What does money mean to you? And start there. That's my point. Start the conversation. What is money? What is money to you? Like from the beginning, very beginner's mindset. And to me, that's how you bring awareness to the world to think about money. And they're going to realize that the way that we have been told what money is and how it works and how it should work and la da da, and this is what you do with it. And you need to save for this, you need to pay this, and you need. That's. It's just ideas of others um, that the world is much more um, abundant than and li than limited as the fiat system could be. Mm -hmm. Because the, what it is is that okay, fiat system is it, it helps you, but then it traps you. It's like student loan debts; it helps you, but then after. You probably asked for 48,000 student left done, but with 22%. So in 15 years, you're going to end up paying $156,000. So from 48 to 150 seats, what does that mean? What really that means? So it's like, I think the question is, what is money? And open conversations, start, start talking about money with people, with friends, with everyone around you. Don't start there. Start with money. Understand money with your friends and where they're at and get it from there. It's it's incredible. I've just been doing that and that's what I realized I needed to build a company that helps people to become aware of money and their personal money habits because they're going to start making decisions once they start being aware. But for what? Okay, you're going to invest on what okay on the best money now <laughs> and so it's like um that's how i'm doing it in a way personally now uh but of course um every industry every person have different problems and we need to think better for very specific niche target groups like how can we help like, uh, like, like when we, I went to the ranchers, how can we help 1% of United States regenerative farmers around the country to learn about Bitcoin? Just 1% of the entire agriculture sector. And let's go visit them and let's do what we can. And they have conversation and see what their pain points are. And I think that's, powerful and that's what to me adoption looks like is doing the work yeah. is doing the real is the work like that so um yeah well, you have to go to all uh, all the person like if i had an uh I gave a presentation i think a year ago uh in front of like young people uh, between 20 and 25 and it was basically a bitcoin talk and I did not want to talk about Bitcoin because then the whole topic 
would be shifted to like, oh, Bitcoin is bad for the environment, Bitcoin is that and that, this, this whole thought would have came up. And I wanted to avoid that from the beginning. So what I did was asking them, uh, and we spent a whole hour on that part only, ask them, what do you want uh, in money? If you have the power, if you're God, how would you um, make money good? Like what properties are you searching from? And the whole property list, like we know from the money properties that uh, people that study Bitcoin and Austin economics know, it came up. It's just like it came up in different words. It came up with different uh, facets. And we spent a whole hour on that. And we discussed like, oh, is this good? Can we group that together? We voted on stuff. And the outcome of the first hour was like, oh, yes, this is the properties of money that we are searching for. And then <laughs> we put all the asset classes on top of it, like uh, uh, fiat, uh, Bitcoin, gold, everything we, we listed. Uh, and then we voted again, like, is gold a good store of value is uh, would that be a good uh, um, unit of account would that like we all the properties we listed uh and then we voted on all each uh, 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 on each property on each asset and the end of the day it was oh bitcoin is actually the perfect money if we look at it first principles uh, and i think this is the way better approach to um, ask the question like uh, not like when we someone asks me, "Oh, why Bitcoin?" and I'm like, "What is money?" <laughs> it's like <laughs> the 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 question should be otherwise. Like we, we should encourage people to think in first principles and and do that, and not like find painkillers. A lot a lot of the feared world is like, let's find painkillers for the pain that feared is 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 rooting in us. Uh, let's fix the underlying problem, and then we can uh, go forward. Uh, one part of your story. I want to uh, dig in before we, we end the podcast with the end routine. Um, you lived on the farm, I think, for two months or something like that, you said. And this is uh, something amazing because it also tells us a lot of about your, your personality. You just lived there for two months. You let yourself really dig into this whole thing. Like, actually, like a lot of people are like virtual <laughs> speculating. They're going under the farm, interviewing the farmer for like, an afternoon and then like, now I know what the farmer's pain points are, but you actually lived there like two months. Uh, and yeah. I, I grew up on a farm actually kind of, uh, not really, uh, but it's really close to me. So I was every day there. Um, what did you learn on the farm uh, besides uh, how they can integrate Bitcoin and stuff like that? What, 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 how was it different than the life in Miami? I don't know how different it was to the life in, in Venezuela. What did you learn on the farm? Well, um, okay. I learned from um, mowing the soil, planting the seed, like planting the seeds, mowing the soil, uh, getting rid of uh, the, the uh, plants that are called... Uh, the weeds, I think, plant weeds. The yeah, the weeds. Getting rid of the weeds. Um, moving cows by eighty acres by eighty acres. Sorting them, picking them, like giving them food, which mm -hmm. is not really. They eat from grass because I lived on a farm that is pure regenerative. Um, so they eat all in grass, and then sorting them, taking the cattle to the processing plants, sorting them on a, on a on horse, so horse riding, um, taking them to the processing plants, going to processing plants, signing the paper, so giving them the cows, seeing other uh, huge trucks doing the same, taking the cows from the truck. Then after that, packaging the meat, unpackaging the meat, cooking the meat, eating the meat, selling the meat, delivering the meat, working in farmer's markets. Um, literally, I did everything. And that's one part. On the other side, every time, um, every day, the farmer will start with a story about the difference between regenerative farming and traditional and conventional farming in the United States and why they, it's why there's two sides of it, why 
99% of the meat in the United States have um, are cows that inject antibiotics or eat hay, the hay that is artificial. Um, basically, we, he's like, do you want to know what this means? Okay, let's go to the land. I'll show you. So we see, I'll come to, we come to the land and in the car, as we go in the car, we see two lands of hay. And he's like, pay attention to this one. And now we're going to pay attention to the other one. The first one was a color, like a yellow color. The second one was green color, lower grass. And he's like, can you see the difference? I see, I see the difference in color and size. He's like, exactly. The yellow one is the one that is, uh, has pesticides and chemicals so it can grow faster. And the green one is lower is the one that is natural. He's like, I buy the hay for my cows from the natural. That means that a regenerative farming really like give hay to their cows, even hay that is organic and like natural. We don't even do the hay that is given to the, tra that is the, fa the pasture that is given to the traditional. So it was incredible to see how food how food is made from the beginning, it all matters from the soil and from the ground. Like from the root is where everything basically goes after and after and after. Um, so seeing that, seeing the difference of, of cows, cows, one that is regenerative, one is that is conventional, um, one is more bloated than the other one, actually fat. He said, can you see the the bones behind the cows? They have like two bones in the, he's like, if you don't see the bones in the cow, it's because they are um, conventional fitted and they're probably ate grains. So they have more, gra more um, uh, grasa. How do you say grasa? Um, greased? No. Uh, tallow? No. How do you say grasa? Um, fat. <laughs> they have more. They have more fat in that part than they should have, um, and that's not okay. So I did that, and then in a processing plant inside, I got a tour one day, and I could see a cow like open and everything, and it's like, whoa, this is real. <laughs> um, yeah, there's so much. Oh, traditions and culture. Also, I was living in Texas, Lobo, Texas. Um, I learned about a lot about their politics uh, and politics in the industry, politics in this country, in the state. Um, and yeah, like literally it's like a different country over there than Miami. It's different, such a different lifestyle. And if I do Texas again, I will live in a ranch. I wouldn't, that's how you, that's how you do it. That's what, that's why you leave there. Like, honestly, there's no other way. Um, and yeah, it was, I learned shooting. Um, that was fun too. Fun and, and like impressive that, you know, um, I don't know. It was impressive to me, to be honest, um, that everyone would have a gun there or like, uh, it's like, so it's like normal to do, uh, but they have their reasons and I, I respect. And, um, yeah, so that was pretty much my experience besides the, like helping them set up Bitcoin payments and all of these part. And, and yeah. And, and like at the end of the day, they were accepting Bitcoin payments for their, for their meat. And that was amazing to see that I was there with them and, People were buying in their website in Bitcoin. Amazing. I love it. Uh, I, I, and there's so much in there. And then we're already like close to the one one hour mark. Uh, I mean, we, we <laughs> I, had, I have so many more questions to you, but I think we will uh, cut it here and make a second we'll round. We'll probably need a part two. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we'll, make a, we'll make a part two, especially also when you're just now launching Philippa. Maybe we can do like in a year or half a year uh, when, when it's up and running and help already people with, with success stories and stuff like that. Uh, I'm re really looking forward to that um 
just before we end, uh, before we go to the end routine, uh, what do you expect uh, in, in your life the next uh, like half a month? What's uh, not half a month, uh, half a year, six months? Uh, what's the up and coming thing? Probably uh, Philippa and uh, building that out, right? Yeah, basically raising money for Philippa, hiring software development team. Um, we are executing uh, customer acquisition uh, strategies to get traction to the platform. Right now, we already have a joint beta list, wait list uh, for potential users that want to be part of. We're starting a community chat in Discord as well that talks about money. Uh, probably we're going to have some talks around Bitcoin um, in which I'll send to you the QR codes or the links for you also to join and to share. And so that's on one side, Felipa, and I'm um, taking the route of, yeah, uh, becoming this big financial, um, it's not educational platform, but it's, it's literacy, right? And it's going to start from personal finance management, but probably, of course, we're going to have Bitcoin, um, some creative Bitcoin ideas and solutions that I'm sure is they're going to come up. And and then on the other side, I'm contributing to the Bitcoin industry um, as contractor and providing consulting services on um, strategy, marketing, outreach and community. Mm. So right now, companies that are looking to um, improve growth, um, expand, um, something for, for their companies, they can come to me and I'll, um, you know, I'll be resourceful for them. Either they can work directly with me or probably they might work with other people. I'm really good at getting traction for, uh, platforms and like engaging with people and community. I'm, co I'm going to be networking a lot this year. Um, so expanding my network is going to help anyone that works with me at the end of the day. Uh, and what I, my objective is um, talk to people about either solutions about cross-border payments, solutions for Bitcoin, solutions for personal finance. So basically analysis is the front of the, like the, the Bitcoin ecosystem, fintech um, out there, like, gathering feedback and and providing solutions or understanding problems if that makes sense so i'm taking that route for networking um and yeah and and of course who knows it's not on my plans like to fully commit to a full-time um, role right now but if it comes and i'm able to like work on my company i'll I'll take that if it's a company that is aligned with my career growth as well. Um, yeah, that's what it, that's where my that's this next year. I'm gonna be a Bitcoin conference uh, in Nashville in two, in July. So I are you going? Uh, I actually I should go. I already have. You should go. I have. I've, I already have tickets there, uh, and I should go definitely. I'm. I'm still not one hundred percent sure if I should go, but I. I, I it's like <laughs> I should go definitely. And by the way, the, the same question to you: Do you come to uh, Bitcoin Prague? Because uh, that what uh, Nashville in July is for America is Bitcoin Prague in Europe. Uh, which is also uh, basically amazing. I, f I, f I think the, uh, they even had some beef with each other on, on Twitter, those p <laughs> two Bitcoin conferences. Uh, and yeah. I, I probably, I, I want to be at both. Uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to meeting more Bitcoiners uh, and being uh, in, in Bitcoin. Like if, if someone uh, wants to go to Bitcoin Prague, I will definitely be there. And to like 60, 70%, I will also be in, in Nashville. It's just a, a long time travel for me uh to to go there uh for like prague is just like three hours from from my my house like with the, with the car and uh i think nashville is like 15 or 14 hours of flight uh so it's a, a longer trip but i i should definitely do that and uh, yeah uh, if, if, if if i'm there i'll let you know definitely
Well, I, you should definitely go. I don't think you're going to regret. I think it's going to be fun. Nashville is my top two favorite city in the United States. Oh. Um, and I'm super excited that this time the Bitcoin conference is in, that, in there and not in Miami. So I'll be traveling. I think a lot of people will be traveling. Uh, so, well, if you go, hopefully we can meet in person. Maybe we do part two over there. Uh, yes, actually, I think uh, even uh, like I have uh, contact with, with, with Chris uh, from the uh, Bitcoin magazine and he gave me uh, media passes. So we probably have like even access to like podcast rooms and stuff like that. I did not see nicely, but probably there is some some potential uh, there. Um, yeah, then let's might meet in, in Nashville. <laughs> let's see. About might. That. Might yeah. meet. Yes, yes, hopefully. Uh, yes, of course. Well, thank you so much for this uh, initiative. And I, I, um, I'm, I was listening to your podcast episodes. I'm, I'm excited to continue like having them on my day. Um, excited for this one as well. Um, and yeah, I, if like, can I, can I say my socials? Uh, yeah, mentioned that. Uh, uh, this, uh, we we have now our Android team where like the previous guest is asking a question for you, and then I would ask you your 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 socials, and I will put also your Twitter or Instagram handle, whatever you want to put okay. in the description, and people can just click on it. Uh, so uh, the Android team is uh, where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest. Uh, without knowing who the next guest actually is. So they are like kind of random. Okay, so I need and to ask who the next guest is. I know no, uh, the, the, the last guest had a question for you. And then, oh. and then you have a question for the next guest. But before that, uh, you have uh, a question from the last guest to you without knowing who, who is it. I mean, your okay. question, and your question is, what is your outlook for Bitcoin adoption in the coming 10 years? Mm. my outlook that means like where do i see myself in 10 years with bitcoin adopted yes like what what do you what do you in in envision bitcoin adoption looking like in the next 10 years uh i think more broadly and i think less about you more about like where is bitcoin adoption uh in in the world going in the next 10 years 10 years is like a long time i think <laughs> Yeah, 10 years, I'll be, okay, 10 years. Uh, well, honestly, how I see it is uh, riding horses. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, maybe riding some horses or like boating a lot or like maybe traveling a lot working remote, contributing to the economy, um, having the freedom and contributing to the, to the healthy economy, to a healthier economy. Um, I'll see myself spend like buying my coffee with Bitcoin or TP in the servers with Bitcoin or um, maybe, yeah, paying well, I do today pay freelancers with Bitcoin already. Um, but I see an economy where the value, it's part of our value exchange, more casual and than it is right now. Amazing. And, and buying horses with, with Bitcoin, right? <laughs> yes. And yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And uh, thank you for that. Uh, it was an uh, amazing talk. It was definitely uh, another uh, great insight in, in another great Bitcoin mind. Um, before we let you go, uh, where can people find you? Where are your socials? Where can people uh, yeah, get in touch with you, ask you questions? Yes. Um, Twitter and LinkedIn right now are my most uh, profes like my professional tools for networking. Personal Instagram is just for fun there. Um, probably I'll change it for more professional as I building a company is required for me to uh, have a better, like just more professional exposure uh, um, content wise. Um, and then 
I have my own website, which I have like a contact form. Also takes people to just chat, like contact me on my email or get on a book, a call with me if they want to. So, um, my website is in both my LinkedIn and Twitter profiles in my bio. And you can book a call with me. And if you're a startup, you can have a consulting call with me, ask for help. Uh, if you're a person, like podcaster, want to interview uh, a friend, they want to chat, want to hear about my story, you want, want to connect for business. or um, So, yeah, that's how. Amazing. Thank you for being on. Thank you for taking the time, Analysis. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Robin.